This is episode 2 of Wednesday. We pick up right after the events of episode 1. Our resident, tough as nails sheriff, is combing through the forest looking for Rowan's dead body, but it seems they cannot find it. In the meantime, Wednesday is beginning to question her sanity, I mean, was she ever sane? She is wondering if she really saw Rowan die like she thought she did. The plot thickens even further when Rowan struts in alive and well and snarkier than ever. Everyone is questioning her story and wondering if she is really trying to stir up trouble. Of course, when your alleged murder victim who wanted to kill you turns up alive and well, it is bound to drive you crazy. But on the bright side, Tyler seems to believe her, and they discuss it when they meet at the therapist's office. Isn't that sweet in a sort of Harley Quinn Joker psycho romance sort of way? Meanwhile, Enid is preparing for the Poe Cup, a boat race, of course, it is named after the Dark One himself. Enid seems fixated on winning even though she is destined to fail because Bianca Barclay always wins the cup anyway. But our ever-optimistic preppy blonde will never say die. Enid tries to rope Wednesday into joining the team, but Wednesday has her obsession to attend to and is not interested in the Poe Cup. Wednesday interrogates Enid about Rowan. But Enid can only tell Wednesday that Rowan is Xavier's roommate. And the situation gets even stranger when Wednesday hears that Rowan has been expelled for some unknown reason and is leaving the school immediately. While Wednesday cannot follow him herself, she decides to dispatch Thing to spy on him. Principal Weems and Wednesday talk and recent events prompt Weems to ask about the visions. She had a strong suspicion that Wednesday was having visions since the day she pulled a Houdini and found the farmer dead on the road. You know, the broken neck that is seared into all our memories. Anyway, she asks Wednesday if she has talked to her mother about the visions. She sounds like she has a healthy relationship with her family. But, like the rest of us, Wednesday is a dysfunctional queen, and she shuts that down. So Principal Weems tells her mother started getting her visions around the same age and warns her they were unpredictable and possibly dangerous. Seeing the futility of this conversation, she encourages Wednesday to join a club, which is mandatory. We begin a fun montage where Wednesday tries out the various clubs but continues investigating her case. She starts with the choir led by Bianca who apparently is the first person Wednesday saw after Rowan died, who informs she did what Wednesday instructed and told Principal Weems immediately. Wednesday opens her mouth and shatters glass everywhere. The fat lady from Harry Potter would be jealous. Then she goes to archery with Xavier and asks him about his roommate. Xavier admits that his roommate has been acting odd in the past few weeks. He then tells her not to look for Rowan, which leads to Wednesday insulting him, calling him an elitist snob, and subsequently firing the arrow and hitting the perfect bullseye. This is after Xavier was trying to teach her. By the way, clearly, this is not the club for her. She settles on the beekeeping club led by Eugene, and he and Wednesday become the two official members. But Wednesday gets some news thing has located Rowan, who is now leaving the school, bags, car, and all. Wednesday tries to talk to him, but Rowan lies, evades her questions and takes off with Marilyn. While Wednesday can't follow him herself, she dispatches her handy minion, Thing. Anyway, Thing grabs onto the car, and they speed away to the train station. Rowan walks as Thing tries to pursue him but has a hard time in the hustle and bustle of the train station. Seriously, does no one notice the disembodied Frankenstein hand frolicking about? Rowan walks into a bathroom stall but transforms into an old man. Thing does not see this, therefore loses sight of him. But we get to see the old man turn into Principal Weems. What? It looks like we have a monster not part of the clubs. She was too perfect and preppy anyway. Is she the murderer? Thing returns to the school and informs Wednesday that they lost Rowan. And Wednesday lets out a barrage of insults directed towards Thing for the seeming incompetence. Like any self-respecting sleuth, Wednesday wants to return to the crime scene to see if she can get some extra clues. But she will need Enid to cover for her. Enid agrees but on the condition that Wednesday apologizes to Thing. It turns out they have really bonded and have become girlfriends over the past few days. Wednesday reluctantly agrees. She finds Thing on the bed flipping through a magazine. Not to be that guy, but does Thing have eyes? Anyway, she tries to apologize. But in the most, I don't want to but have been made to weigh, which Thing sees as disingenuous and dismisses. This forces Wednesday to dig deep and show some humanity by giving an actual apology which leads to an adorable heartfelt moment between our little storm cloud and the stapled hand. 
With sufficient cover secured, Wednesday heads back to the woods, and it looks like Boris the lover boy Tyler is there. They talk a little bit, and Tyler still believes that she saw Rowan die in the woods that night. Tyler's dad slash sheriff is still combing through the woods, so Wednesday and Tyler have to hide from him. It looks like Wednesday's instincts pay off she finds Rowan's glasses. Then she has one of those it's so raven moments again. This time the vision is very detailed and shows Rowan attempting to squash Wednesday with the gargoyle, and flips over to a crazed Rowan arguing with Xavier about Wednesday and tearing out a page from a book. Remember the drawing he showed Wednesday when he tried to kill her. She snaps out of the vision and goes on a mission to go and find the book. While on her mission and back at the school library, she comes across Marilyn, who spots what she is looking at, and she points out that the mark on the ripped out page looks like the mark of the school's secret society. The Nightshade Society this gives Wednesday a lead on what to look for. Now she has to break into Xavier and Rowan's books to find the book she saw in the vision. So gets Thing to go with her. They walk in relatively easily and start looking for the book. Of course, they fail to locate it. But they find a hidden compartment and a mask, perhaps the secret society. Like any typical break in attempt, Xavier has to be there. And Wednesday and Thing have to hide under the bed. Not creepy at all. Bianca comes in to talk to Xavier. There seem to be some unresolved feelings, with Bianca seemingly wanting to get back together and Xavier resisting. Bianca is unhappy about the level of attention Xavier is showing to Wednesday, and suspects feelings on Xavier's part. Xavier says he has to protect her, but Bianca warns him to stay away from Wednesday. I mean, sure, let's take advice from the jealous ex. So because Bianca had some not-so-nice things to say about Wednesday, she decides to join Enid in her quest to defeat Bianca in the boat race. This game is messy vindictive and has absolutely no rules. Each team tries to sabotage the other while dressed in the cutest outfits. Wednesday is being a cat. Bianca's team has a merman toppling canoes, dirty, but we like it. The remaining teams reach the shore and go for the flags. But when Wednesday touches the flag, she sees her blonde doppelganger dressed in white, who tells her she is the key. When she finally awakens, she finds she has lost the lead, and the other teams have their flags and are headed back. She grabs her flag and gets back to her boat. We continue with some more subterfuge with the merman. But Thing saves the day by going underwater, punching the merman, and knocking him out. Enid's team damages Bianca's boat, and they win the race. Finally, our little sleuth figures out the clues and finds the entrance to the secret society, and the password is snapped twice. Nostalgia, Wednesday snaps twice an ode to the old theme song, and the door opens. She walks down the stairs, and in the room, there is a photo of her parents and the book she is looking for. But before she can go any further, she is caught. 